these, these things. So the first thing I'm starting with is the Ionian mode. So I O N I A N Ionian. So, <laughs> and I'll put that, you can see it on the video, but um, Ionian just means the major scale. I'm playing in the major key. So if okay. somebody says, um, like I was looking at a sampler the other day and it was like, you could put it in these different modes and change the key of all the, the, uh, the buttons. And so it's like, do you want to be in G Ionian or do you want to be in, you know, and, and, I, and people that don't know, they're like, well, that sounds really heady. I have no idea. Well, all it's saying is G major. Right. So G Ionian. And this is, so as you jot things down, it's one thing to jot down Ionian. Okay, just because that's what you're going to hear from time to time, um, and it's just uh, a part of music. Okay, let's see. If, let me get that out of the way. Now, actually, I'm going to get a new piece of paper because that has D major on it. We do not need that. Okay, so we have the Ionian mode, and we have G. We have that first position. Okay, and that equals the major key. Okay, so, so for us, we're still in the key of G, G, um, uh, and then A, B, C, D, E, F. Now, do you remember, as I bring this a little bit closer, do you yep. remember um, the... Uh, when you when you have these, you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So just a little bit of re of review. These I are this many times. Okay. Okay. Yes. Okay. Good. Yes. So you've yeah. got it. So uh, if these are the notes that are in the key of G, which one of these is the sharp? Do you remember the last one? Seven. Okay. F sharp. Excellent. Excellent. Now, if these are, if we're referring to chords and we're giving right. them, you know, harmony, then which G. ones are major and minor? So the second, third, and sixth are minors. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Good. Okay. There you go. Pretty simple. You've got it. Now, yep. now let's let's go. Um, uh, we did the first degree of the key of G, which was played on the third fret, third, right. fifth, and seventh. You right. can't, can't hardly see it there, but. Were you, were you able to go over that one much? I haven't, I've stayed with the first, or the seventh The batter. seventh, good, 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 uh, okay, good. Uh, but, um, nice. Let's... I'm re I, I figured we probably were getting in there, so this is perfect. Okay, okay, good. So let, so the seventh pattern, and this is on the video, you saying that, and so that we can make note of that, but we've got, we got the seven, one, two, three, four, five, six. you've got that right okay and right. then so for the for now we're, we're coming back around basically to this first pattern that seventh pattern also has a um, a mode name that's a Greek name and we're not going to say that name right now because that's that's just confusing things and we're just gonna come back around to it when we finish this up so this first pattern this is called the Ionian pattern. Let's call it that. Okay. You know, just some people may hate that, but I, I like to call it this. Um, but you start with the third fret, and then you play the fifth fret, and then you play the seventh fret. And then you do the same thing on the next string. Now I'll tell you why this is important in, in just a second. This is really, really cool. And then we go over to the two middle strings, the D and G, and they're played the same. They're played fourth fret, fifth fret, and seventh. 
and then the same thing. Four, five, seven. And then we're going to go over to the fifth fret and the seventh fret and the eighth fret of the B string. So it goes five, seven, eight. And then we're going to do the same thing on the next string. Five, seven, eight. Okay? So, so that's pretty easy that because that actually is simpler in some it, it some is ways. Simpler, you're you're totally pattern. right because yeah. it has both two strings are the same so every string has a buddy that that repeats <laughs> so these are whole steps Authorial stressor. So it's sorry again. So it's yeah. uh, three starting at G. Yeah. So G oh, and then A and then B. So three, five, seven. So it comes. Yeah. Go one G, more a, with that pinky. G, yeah. 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 G, Way up there. B. Okay. Yeah. And then same thing. And then, then C D E. And then. That's right. And then come up to the fifth fret, oh. five, seven, eight, gap, and then five, seven, eight. That's, got okay. it. Okay. So, Stretch, yeah, so, so a lot of, a lot of stretching there, but again, we're calling that the Ionian, the Ionian pattern, okay? Just for sake of what works in my brain. Okay, and I think what works in a lot of people's brains when they when they look at this pattern, the Ionian pattern. So this week, that's what you'll be playing. Now, within that pattern, there's a a lot of really cool stuff. Okay, so so now on the video, I'm going to show you what cool things you can find inside this pattern and how you can use this pattern. It's very practical for finding the key, finding the chords in any key of any song basically except for like some crazy you know jazz tune that switches keys all the time okay so if you have like your first note is right here on the third fret so each of these first six notes has a chord shape that corresponds to it check this out so it's just a bar chord it's a simple bar chord and so you make a g major bar chord right okay so we've got, and the and the the most important note of that bar chord yeah. is going to be right there, okay? And that is going to be on the, coming up here. It's a B note, and it's going to be on the fourth fret of the G string, okay? That's your major third. So right, and then if you were to, so basically it's like this. If you're like, I don't, I don't know, I, I, I forgot the chords that are in the key of G. And I don't have a piece of paper in front of me to write all that stuff down. I, you know. So here's a practical way to do that. You start with the first chord, which is G. Then you, go, then you move up one step, right? Because we're, we're still following our little scale pattern, right? And I said mm -hmm. that we go three, five, seven. So the next chord has got to be on the fifth fret. Okay, and then make sure that your middle finger is up, making that a minor chord. Okay, so that's that, a minor. Yeah, that's your two minor. If your if your middle finger is up, not touching. That's it. a minor. Uh huh. An A minor. No A. Yeah. So G, A minor. Oh wow. That's right. So you have to put the finger down to get the major? That's right. That's exactly it. Wow. Cause cause check this out. Does it apply does that apply to here too for G? G uh, yes, exactly. Very good. Okay. Because why? Check it out. Man, when we were talking about, do you remember the intervals? Is that wrong for how many years? Yeah. I mean well, sometimes I will put it down, but I'll there's a that's minor. But if oh, wow. you're, it really isn't depending upon how you strum it. Look, if you just strum really, here's what you've done. I guarantee you, 
you've done this. You strum. You're not yeah. even hitting this string. You're not even voicing the string. I'm not. String. No, that's fair. So I'm that not. so all that is. Oh, see, okay. that's a power chord. Rock on. Okay, sweet. That has your one, your five, and an octave. That's just a big bass chord. So you're okay. You did if you were really voicing it and you're going. You have been like, holy crap, that sounds terrible, you know, <laughs> and, and and you would have stopped immediately. But the but the thing that you've done is you're like, oh okay, uh, because you're a skilled player and you go, okay, well I'm just not gonna, I might kind of mute that, and you give it whatever flavor you want. So it's just like this. Wow. What chord? Cool. What chord is this? If you play it down here, e. e. Now, what chord is this? E minor. E minor. So it's the same idea, e right? The head. Wow. Right? You're just moving E major and E minor up and down the yeah. fretboard. Isn't that cool? So, so you don't have to like. That's it. That's it. Now you can really voice your chords and give them more of a. Um, sophisticated voicing and really yeah. know exactly where you are and all that. Okay, so enough about that. So your first chord has the middle finger down. Now, let me let me tell you this really quick and I just have to explain because a lot of people go, okay, I have, if I'm playing an E yeah. and I raise my middle finger up, then that, that, then the note is just disappeared. No, it didn't disappear, it's flatted. It's being fretted by the, the nut of the guitar. The nut. So right, instead right. of... So remember how I said that a chord is made up of a one, a three, and a five? So right. what you're doing, if if we're talking about like a... Um, like this is, this is obviously the major third of an E when you're playing right. that, that note with your finger, right? There's your major third. There, right. it makes it minor and scary because you dropped it down. So, da -da, da -da, major. So this is the one. This is the five. This is the one again. And here's your three that gives it its identity. Without that, it's an identityless chord, and you can do whatever you want. You know, which is great. That's why so many people use like power chords and stuff. Okay. Yeah, right. So. Check this out. Your one chord, finger down. Your two chord is always, 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 no matter what key you're in, is always a step up and the middle finger is up. That's your two chord. Now, you may be playing along on the guitar and you're like, I don't know what the heck that is, you know, uh, but you can count it up, G, and then G sharp, A. So it's yep. A minor. And then you go to your, so, your, your three chord is always a step up from the two chord. One, two, three. And it has middle finger up, right? Because you told me your three chord so you is- could actually play a B minor? Yeah, that's B minor. Oh, sorry. Yeah. I, I lost you. There, yeah. am I back? And C. Yeah, yeah, and then C. Okay, but look at this. But for C, we go down here because we, we're going to follow this pattern. One, two, three. And then we're going to go down here for your four chord. Okay. Yep. This is, and you make this major. Now this, when it's major, now I'm, I'm going to step on your toes a little bit because I know you don't play it like this. Many people play like sort of a major chord based on the A string root when the root is on the A yeah. string. A lot of people kind of do this. I do. Or yeah. C. Yeah, yeah, and that's that's yeah, yeah, yeah. that's a perfectly good chord. Yeah. But that's not a major chord or a minor chord. That's a sus chord. Sus chord. That's okay. a C sus. So see how it Nothing. sounds airy. <laughs> yeah, it sounds yeah. airy, which is yeah. cool. And you can put whatever you want. But if you want major, you have to make this an A major chord. A major. You're borrowing this? Yes, that's right. Okay, so that's a high E. 
and I'm barring, yes. So it'd be like that or now on the acoustic guitar, here's the problem. It's like, who wants to play that? That didn't really sound good. It could kind of sound choked. It kind of sounds cool if you're doing some really folky stuff with your thumb. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like soft, it's cool, but you know. But just for sake of theory and learning this, that's why we're going over this. Now, your your B chord, or B chord, your D chord, which is going to be your five chord, is a step up from that, and it's major as well. Now, your six chord is going to be a step up from that. Remember, one, two, three, four, five, six. It's going to be right here, and it's going to yep. be minor. We're going to make an A minor shape. Okay. So that would be an E minor. That is an E minor. Oh, no, no, that's, that, that's E, no, sorry. No, you were correct. That's E minor. With the, with the middle, fi or middle finger down? The middle finger is down on this one. Oh, it, oh, that's the weird one? Yes, that's, now, like, it, no, like, the F, there's an F sharp diminished. Now, I think you may be up too high. Um, so, we're on the seventh fret. Oh, I fret. am up too high. Yeah. So, so like, yeah. right there, that's an E minor. Now, why is that like that when over here, this shape means major, and up here on the A string, it's minor? Well, that's because the way the guitar is engineered. See, the first four strings, and this is interesting uh, information, is like the first, or the last four really, are, are, were modeled after a bass. It's our base, an upright base. Sure. Okay. Then they, the, the guitar makers wanted to, and I don't know how this came about, but they wanted to end on an E. They wanted to put a high E. So in order to do that, make it sound nice, they had to put a B in between it. Now the B string is nasty. The B string is tuned down a half step from the rest of the strings. Okay. So if you do this shape here, you can't just come over here and do the same shape. That would be nice because it's minor here and you have to compensate for the B string, which sucks. Okay, so if I'm gonna play major, just to recap. Yes. G, I'd have to play like this. If yes. I wanna play minor, yes. I'd have to do lift up yes. and string it all yes i could i could play like this and that could be major but if i really want to play it minor it'd be like that and then for e oh e sorry yes e i would have to do this for minor yes i couldn't just simply do that right right okay you okay. could now and the reason why you 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 can if you you know have you done this kind of e where you where you don't bar it you just play it up here and play all the strings yes okay yes. well that's called that's a huge e power chord that's just e and b right. like e b e b e b e b there's it's not major and it's not minor so you can do it's it over, a sus, right yeah it's a, it's well it's it's actually not even a sus it's just a five oh, okay chord. so it's like a big power chord e5 wow. sure. so again all these things will will uh, make sense, you know, as you watch the video and go, oh, okay, okay, that, okay, that makes sense. Now check this out. So with this in mind where you go, okay, this, this pattern of major, minor, minor, major, major, minor, that's, that's the way that you figure out any key. So if I said, Hey, you know what, David, we need to play in, and, uh, I want I want to play the one four and five, uh, uh, B flat. You'd be like, okay. So you go on the E string, A A sharp or B flat. Okay. Some people, what not the musicians you play with, they would call it. They would say it correctly and right, say probably. B flat. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because that's that's correct. You, it would be A sharp like if it was minor, but it's major B flat. Okay. So. So all you have to do is the same pattern. You're just like, he's like, somebody's like, play the one, four, and five of a B flat. You're like, one, four, five. And you've got the Ramones. 
one, four, five, because the one is right here. If what if right. you said, hey, I want to play a one, a major one, uh, the the minor three, and then a four. So it goes major one, minor three, major four, major one, minor three, major four, and things like go up to the five. Okay, go up to the six. Oh, I know the six has to be minor. Go down to the four. Go down to the two. And go back down to the one. Okay, so if you're in the key, all you have to know is what key. Okay, so what key are we in? And then you know the, the one through six of that key and even yeah. the even you can even do the seven if you want to do a diminished chord that they have in there. I don't know, it just depends. Um, but you can do that in any key. Okay, does that make sense? At it does. All? Okay, it does make sense. So I have to change a little bit of how I play this chord. Right, right. I hadn't considered that before, but yeah. Well, think of it like this. Don't look at it so much as a way of like. Um, I call this sort of survival guitar if I'm like in a situation and I'm like, yeah, uh, I don't know where the one, four, and five are, or I'm teaching students. Uh, they can always revert back to bar chords off of the E string. One, four, five. Okay. Right. Minor six. Okay. So that works. But if you were to. The, the real challenge comes when you as a, as a singer, songwriter, acoustic player goes, okay, okay, well, how do I voice those now on the acoustic guitar? Because I'm not going to sit there and just play those same six bar chords like that right. all night long. That's ridiculous. It's not going to sound good. You know, so where can I, because I deal with this all the time with church. Because people go, oh, worship's boring. I'm like, well, that's just because you don't know how to play guitar. If you know how to play guitar, then you can think of something that's very interesting in any situation. You can right. always voice a chord in a really cool way, right? So, yep. so like, if you know, um, like, for instance, we have, a, you're like, okay, I'm gonna play a one, a four, and a five. You know, you can, you can do that like that. You can also play G, C, and D. You can also play like another thing that I'm gonna show you right now, which all goes back to this Ionian pattern that we highlighted today. Okay, because now, first we were dealing with the first two strings of the Ionian pattern in G. Yeah. Where we use those bass notes to kind of determine, you know, what what chords we can play in what key. Now we're going to talk about, and I, and I, we briefly touched on this, I think, but we're going to go over it again. Because um, I think it's very helpful. The chords that are found in the chord shapes found in the rest of this pattern. Okay, so you know this. We talked. We did talk about this because you play it a lot. A G up here. Now, if you look at that, back to remember the last two or the let's call it the first two strings. I want to be correct musically, but. The, uh, the first two strings of the of that pattern go five seven eight five seven eight right inside mm -hmm. of that pattern we have this little D shape so now you can kind of see, I want you to visualize yeah. and connect chords with those notes. Now, this is gonna help with creating arpeggios and really cool voicings when you can when you can kind of like visualize the chord shapes inside the triads, inside these patterns. Now you remember this, and then you remember where C is. 
C is right here, D is right here, okay? Now they're all really just parts of these two bar chords, look at that. Right. There's G, okay? Awesome. So the question is, where are those other you know, three chords, where are minors within this? And I don't think we talked about that last. No, I don't think so. Okay. So I'm also going to show you the diminished chord, which is cool. I like diminished triads. Okay. So if this is the one, okay, then, then you're, I'm kind of going to go out of the pattern yeah. a little bit and I'm going to like, think about this. How would you make that, that D shape? right there that's a g chord but it looks like a d and we're we yeah, understand yeah. that so how would you make that minor if you want to play out g minor triad instead of a g major triad uh okay um you're thinking like you would flat one of the notes you flat one of the se the seventh you flat the third oh no 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 you flat this is this is g right so you yeah. would flat mm -hmm. Making a G minor is what you're saying? Yeah, uh-huh. I don't know. I don't know. What Check it do? out. Check it out. Look at this. So switch up your fingers to play a D minor shape. There you so so if you take like if you if you ever play like D minor down here, like Yeah. 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 Same thing. Same thing. Oh, so, oh, oh. So what you want to do is take, you've got these two fingers oh, like okay. this. I got it, I got there it. There you go. Okay. Now play that. G minor. Oh, good. G major. G minor. Okay, now this is extremely important. So this shape, these two shapes are so great because right now, you know, you're really familiar with that that major shape, but we're going to use this minor shape to do some triads. Okay, does that well, make you, sense? You asked, yeah, yeah, yeah you did, but uh, A, B, C, right, no, G, A, G, A, B. So I'm playing a G, which would be, G chord would be G, uh, hold on, sorry. Um, G, B, uh, D, right? Yeah, that's right. Very good. And so you're saying to minor, I would be, what am I doing here? My, you're flatting, you're flatting that, you're flatting that B. So you're that's that's. So that's the, what I'm flatting. Yeah, the third. Okay, so that's. That, and the, you always flatten the third to get the minor. That's exactly it. All right, that's okay. what I was trying to figure out. Yes, that's it. Totally. So, so you go like, like uh, a major chord is a one, three, five, a minor chord is a one flat third five. Right. So, so check this out now to, to play like uh, an A minor up here. Cause we have right. a G. Now, if we want to play a minor, a minor is going to be, look at it, a step up. That's right. And switch the shape. A minor. That's your two. You chord. do the same thing. That's it. That's it. That's it. Okay. So back to G, like the G to A minor. Okay, that's your two chord. Now we want to play the minor three chord, which is B minor in the key of G. Slide yeah. Slide it up. Make it a minor shape now. Now check this out. This is cool. Okay. So the root note, when you're doing a, this shape, a D shape or a D minor shape, the root note yeah, is yeah. at the tip of the triangle. The tip of the okay. triangle, see that triangle? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's always right there. Now what happens at the 12th fret? Every, on every string it starts over, right? So this is high E, this is high A, this is high D. Okay, this is high B. That's right. easy, look at that. So then it makes sense. We're putting that note right on yeah. a B and it's a B minor. So B minor, A minor, G, C, 
D, E minor. Look at that. All I'm doing is taking our E minor shape that we just talked about that we're like, yeah. okay, so I got to put that finger down. Okay, we'll just do a triad like this. Don't play the bass note. And there you go. That's, uh, that's, oh, that's E minor? Yeah, that's E minor. Okay, yeah. So E minor. And, and since here's, here's where, here's where you're going to excel and, and where all of your guitar playing skill is going to help you is like, you're good at muting. So if you're good at muting, then you can play a lot of C, D, E minor. And you're not playing bar chords. Now you're just playing these really cool high chords. And you can do that on the acoustic. You can do it on the electric. You know, and, and, and you just have to think through it. The more you learn these little triads, the other benefit is like you're gonna start learning the notes on the B string because the root note of these is on the B string. So it's B, A minor, B minor, A minor, G. Root note, root note, root note, root note, root note. Okay? Got it. Got it. And, and then you can play, you can play this. It looks like a D chord, but the fifth and the third are flatted. That's weird. That's your diminished triad. So that's extra credit. That's F sharp diminished. <laughs> okay. Sounds good. Yeah, it's like, So you can do all what are called dyads. Dyads are just like two chords. They're implied chords from two notes. Okay, so it's a yeah. lot of stuff. A lot of no, stuff. No, 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 no. I, 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 uh, here, I'll show you. Can I show you something real quick? Yeah. So I made please. a little, I, I never guitar's 